spring day. Um, not so much about the seasons today though. 4.8, woohoo! Wanted to talk about the lifetime of this Bolt EV and passing 19,000 miles. Now it's not maybe the right time exactly for a full review. Might wait for 20, 25,000 to do that. But I thought this gives a good opportunity because I took time to break down the charging costs. So which networks we use predominantly, how much we do at home, how much is non-networked at places like Freevend units on the Mass Pike and Chevy dealerships, that kind of thing. So I wanted to look today at uh, what we've spent over 19,000 miles charging this vehicle. Cost of electricity in different places, level two, DC fast charging at home, and just taking a look at what it costs to Our primary source of charging is public level two uh, destination chargers. So like this one we're coming up to in Lexington, Massachusetts. Um, we do have the portable or trickle charger at home, but we found that most towns around us in uh, suburban Boston have this level two charging infrastructure. Um, the sound quality was pretty bad here, but we'll rejoin it in a second here to take a look at charge point numbers and how we use public level two charging. So we avail ourselves of these several times a week. They fit in with our lifestyle, errands, grocery shopping, kids activities, all kinds of things. Some of them are paid, ranging between 20, 30 cents per kilowatt hour. Others like this place are uh, free units, just pay for the parking, which we come here anyway to, uh, to work and to go for kids activities, as I say. So it doesn't uh, tend to take us out of our routine. Um, this one is a favorite because it's so close to the town center. There are three units here and the, uh, the access is really good. Um, but charge point proved as I look through the numbers to be by far the most important network level two charging especially not so much DC fast charging but this is uh, one of the sites that kind of helps us with that gets us to uh, a regular charge and uh, yeah it works very well for us joined here by the shock bolt interesting color you either love it or hate it with that one but you're never going to lose it in the parking lot or in the snow, so it's good for that, I guess. A quick look. So here's a neat example, just a couple of hours working over lunch in Lexington on uh, the charge point level two. Uh, get 50 60 miles back. This one's actually a really good uh, speed. It gives you 7.2 7.3 kilowatts Which is about what a level 2 will max out at but you get a lot that are 6 or beneath that here nowadays. It was about a year ago, maybe in the last March 2018, that I first saw Model 3 charging at that charge point station now everywhere. It's not, not an uncommon sight at all. Really, really heartening to see. Okay, that covers level 2 charging, so now we'll take a look at DC fast charging and the next biggest network that we use, which is EBGO. So the other major charging network that we use is EVgo. Uh, you've probably seen them mentioned if you watch the uh, winter charging videos. Um, the reason that we typically use them is obviously longer trips. Um, it's mostly DC fast charging um, on road trips. Um, I also use them for the winter charging videos um, to show the differences in charge rates during the colder months, which I will link to the videos down in the description. Um, but the, the major use is obviously on the road when you're going um, longer distances. 
we had a uh, Chevy promotion from uh, October last year through to March 2019 which included 500 free minutes so that paid for a lot of those cold battery testing sessions um, but we also use uh, for a longest time we used um, the Mass Pike free charging which was technically an EVgo site or it is now under the EVgo app but at the time it wasn't networked so you'd never get any logging of those sessions so for the purposes of this comparison everything that uh, goes under the EVgo umbrella is uh, just paid charging sessions that we've uh, done on road trips or the winter charging sessions which were mostly done under the um, Chevy promotion. So the interesting thing about uh, EVgo uh, and our use of it is that although it was um, only 12% of our total charging uh, over this 19,000 miles compared to say charge points 42% which is obviously a lot greater um, the cost for EVgo was significantly more. Now that makes sense because it's DC fast charging you're paying a premium for that but uh, the numbers come out as, uh, let's see, EVgo being 12% of our charging activity, but $324, uh, the cost for that. And that's including the Chevy promotion um, that we had for six months. And charge point being 42%, but only costing $192. So there's obviously a big disparity there, partially the numbers. Promotion. Um, but actually that would be in uh, EVgo's favour because if we had done some of those sessions um, we would have paid even more. Those are you know, primarily um, for fast charging, or should be, um, but we don't need that. We use the level twos locally for that and so here we go an important part of our charging infrastructure both locally and uh, across to Ohio on road trips but certainly not the most cost-effective way to charge and not a good option if you just want to add a few kilowatt hours locally so once we account for the networks that we use, uh, what's left? There's obviously a large chunk. Um, our networked driving came to 54%, so that leaves a lot, uh, a lot remaining. Um, so a lot of it is non-networked charging, uh, public charging. We uh, we do do some at home, which I'll get onto in a minute. But again, it's via the trickle charger. So in terms of other non-networked level 2 and level 3 charging. Um, we have 4% uh, on Chevy dealership charging. So that's places probably early in our uh, driving the Volt EV where we would have gone to find dealerships on the route, especially upstate New York. You know, we've been to dealerships in Albany, uh, Rome, Buffalo, a bunch of different places where the Chevy dealerships are the only place that you're going to get a charge. Now it's not fast charging as we would like it. It's uh, 25 kilowatt units, those Bosch units, which uh, usually max out about 20 kilowatt uh, as the charge rate. So um, not ideal if you're on a road trip, of course. In fact, probably the worst option at this point other than uh, camping out on a level two. But uh, they do, they're free. You know, usually they, we've found they've been well placed. We haven't had to do a whole lot of work to get hooked up to them. So they have been useful. Um, they have their place, but they are starting to get quickly outdated, thankfully, now that you have more locations going in on interstates, turnpikes, um, Electrify America sites, all that good stuff. So I'm happy to see that, happy to be moving away from it, but you know, in the, over the 19,000 miles, it has comprised 4% of our charging and 255 kilowatt hours. Um, the next, there's the mass pike units, which also account for 4% of our charging, a little bit less uh, than the Chevy dealerships at 230 kilowatts on the mass uh, kilowatt hours on the mass pike. Um, and the only reason, again, that I don't include those in the EVgo total is because they weren't networked to the, uh, to the system so you couldn't see them the ones we used in the app uh, you couldn't start them it didn't register the uh, charge sessions in the EVgo app so I'm not counting them towards uh, 
EV go total at this point. So whatever you think about it, it's uh, you know they were there was a free period, which again I'll link to the video um, about the end of free charging on the mass bike down below. Um, that's uh, that's an interesting case study I think in how people can use free charging and uh, the networks can hopefully use that data to uh, see how people have used their um, locations and uh, decide where to put new uh, installations, more equipment. I definitely think that it would benefit, you know, the Mass Pike and the New York Thruway um, to have those kind of facilities right off so you don't have to get off, pay another toll, that kind of thing. But uh, for now, we'll take what we can get. But the Mass Pike did make up 4% of our charging over that 19,000 miles. And that's been incredibly useful. We really appreciated that. Um, and then the rest of the non-network charging is 23%, uh, 1,287 kilowatt hours, which is obviously a lot. Um, and that's all free level two charge. Old hotels where we've charged overnight, um, but it wasn't on a network. Um, national parks, local town halls, you name it. There are any number of places that have non-network chargers where you just plug in and it just starts charging. So uh, those have been really useful. I mean, destination charging at the hotels is now essential in my mind if I'm stopping overnight. Um, so you want to wake up with a full charge and hotels that have that uh, will definitely win my business. And so there's not much more to say about that. You can't really track it much more than that was what remained after we took away the, uh, the known amount of kilowatt hours we've used on non-networked, the networked and from home. Um, so again, it doesn't really matter the allocation there because whether it's Chevy dealerships, Mass Pike, free level two, destination charging, all that stuff, um, if it wasn't on the charge point or EVgo network, it was free for us. We haven't had to uh, pay anything there. All right, there it is, $2.69 per gallon. Gas is relatively cheap, but electricity is still cheaper. Let's look at some of the numbers over our 19,000 miles in a bolt.